So for more on the latest from Israel, joining me live from Tel Aviv is a member of the Israeli parliament and former ambassador to the U.N., Danny Danan. Danny, thank you again for joining us. Good to see you as always. I want to start off with what's happening in the region right now. This huge uh, Arab Muslim summit taking place in Riyadh, where you have many, many different leaders, including Iran. Iran is there. Uh, calling for a ceasefire. So I'll get your reaction to that first. Well, first, Aisha, they are not only calling for a ceasefire. We heard very carefully the words of the Iranian leader who called for the eradication of Israel completely. So uh, we know that Iran is spreading the violence in the region. They are trying to get on board the more moderate uh, Arab countries. Not successfully so far. They know that we are fighting evil. And always the issue of humanitarian uh, aspects. But, you know, deep inside, they know that we are fighting Hamas, we are fighting evil. And, and Hamas and those radical ideas, they put a threat also for the moderate regime in the Middle East, not only for us. Ambassador, you know, it was just about 40 days ago that Fox News or Brett Baer sat down with MBS and they were talking about normalizing relations with Israel. Here is MBS just this weekend on his views about Israel. The kingdom assures its absolute rejection of the continuation of the Israeli aggression, the occupation, and the forcible displacement of the residents of Gaza, and it confirms it is holding the occupation authorities accountable for the crimes against the Palestinian people. So he says the crimes against the Palestinian people, these are pretty strong words coming from the crown prince. L let me ask you this, Ambassador. Is Israel worried at all that by the actions it's taking in Gaza to protect its own citizens, that this might lose the progress that it's made in the last decade with the regional partners, the Arab partners like Saudi Arabia, in trying to normalize these relations. Are you worried about that? So I'm still optimistic about the Abraham Accord. I think in the future we can speak about expanding the accord. But I agree with you, Aisha. You know, we saw the interview with Fox News of uh, MBS, and we know that the Iranians were not happy about it. Mm -hmm. And look what's happening today. All of a sudden, there is a handshake between the Iranian leaders and, and the Saudis, and, and they were able, unfortunately, they were able to, to delay the, the agreement between Israel and the Saudis. They were able to drag us to a cycle of violence. And many people asked why it happened on October 7th. What was the reason for this unprovoked attack? Yeah. I think one of the reasons with the desire of Iran to block the progress between the U.S., Israel, and the Saudis, but eventually it will happen. Yeah, let me, I think we actually have video of, you know, the diplomat from Iran arriving in Saudi Arabia, if we can play that for our viewers right now. I mean, when you look at images like that and what's happening right now in Riyadh, is Israel able to trust these regional partners in the future to normalize relations? So we still have an open dialogue with our partners in the region, but now we are focused in, in a war. We are fighting Hamas. We are determined to win this war. We know it's not easy for our allies also in the region, but uh, we have no other choice. You know, we were not the one who started the, the war on October 7th. You know, we were the one where our families were abducted. You know, we have 240 people now still in the hands of Hamas, including babies. You know, I saw all the demonstrations in New York City that uh, took place. I haven't seen even one sign about the, the Israeli hostages, about the 30 babies in the hands of Hamas. So we are focused on bringing our boys and the babies back home, defeating Hamas. After that, I have no doubt that we will continue to work to achieve peace and to build the, the strong ties we have with the neighbors. Ambassador, we just have about 20 seconds left. Can you give us an update on the timeline? We heard from the president. We heard from Benjamin Netanyahu. They both agree it's taking a lot longer than they anticipated ridding Hamas from Gaza. Where are we at? How much of Hamas have you destroyed so far? And, and who are you looking for? So we, we have a, a challenge here because if we move slow, we are able to minimize casualties to our troops and to the civilians. If we move faster, the, the casualties will be higher. So I think we should move to take the time we need to minimize casualties. Uh, and we have the time. With all the respect to all the demonstrations, we have the time. We are fighting for our lives, and we will win. Okay, Ambassador Danny Danan, thank you for joining us live from Tel Aviv. We appreciate it.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.